Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ricky V. And today I want to tell you all about Egdisteron or Egdisteron. How do you say Egdisteron? Egdisteron? I'll try it a couple ways throughout this. But anyway, this is a real interesting compound, guys. This is actually a hormone that insects need for molting. It's present in plants. Plants make this stuff. Now, in uh, arthropods, Egdisteron is responsible for helping them molt. But in vertebrates, right? In vertebrates, specifically a rat study that was done in. We use rats as, uh, as the entry point to figuring out how things could work in, in our own animal cells. In the rat study, it showed that it had noticeable positive results on anabolism. The study claims it was even better than some black market steroids. I have my own theories about how they might have arrived to that conclusion. I'll go deep into that study in another video. But those positive results in muscle mass on those rat studies could lead us to theorize that maybe we would find those same results in humans. If you look at all of the different on products on the market, I think we found something special here, guys. Because it seems that in practice, and a lot of guys agree with me, a lot of guys buying this product right now agree with me, that in humans, it creates anabolism. You grow more muscle from it. Now, if you've ever heard some of my other work, uh, I've done <laughs> hundreds of podcasts and audios and hours and hours and hours about uh, steroids and anabolics. If you're my other stuff, you heard me say anabolic, androgenic, right? Well, this is not androgenic at all actually the total opposite so we're gonna get into it on this episode sit down grab some popcorn it's gonna be a little bit of a long one but just hang on with me all right don't don't addhd the hell out of this video this is a good one a disteron is something you need to hear about so just hang on i'm ready let's go so disteron is a hormone that insects need to actually metamorph to, to sh shed that exoskeleton crabs lobsters a lot of these animals have it they do it's found in some plants. Now, why would plants make this? Well, if you think about it, uh, if the plant leaves are getting eaten by a caterpillar, what's the best way for that plant to get that, that caterpillar to go away? Well, maybe if you make it turn into a damn butterfly, so it has to go find a, a different food source, so that instead of eating your leaves now, it can go and actually help pollinate your flowers, right, butterfly? Well, you, you feed it some egdisterone, and it'll have some effects. It'll make it go the hell away. Now, us humans, we don't molt, all right? We don't molt, but... Egdisteron has been shown in test to be quite anabolic for us, okay? And, and now it, it, it creates anabolism in a, in a different way than you've probably heard about. It actually does use your sex hormone pathway towards anabolism. And look, any of you guys that have listened to me long enough have already learned there are different paths that we can have for anabolism to create more muscle mass, to increase protein synthesis. Uh, your thyroid hormones, that path plays a part in it as well as fat burning. The insulin made by your pancreas, that, you know, that, that also, that whole pathway also creates anabolism. Hormones coming out of your pituitary, that, that whole human growth hormone, that pathway also can create muscle mass, can regulate how much fat you store. And obviously, we all know the testes, the steroids, the testosterone, the dianabol. Those are just variations of that testosterone that our body makes. And that works via the androgen pathway, which is our sex hormone pathway. And there you also have estrogens. Now... Egdisterone attaches to estrogen receptors. It does, but without dropping a bunch of names to not confuse everybody, there, there, there are a couple of different types of estrogen receptors. And if one, some of them are stimulated, if some of them have an agonist attached to them, they're going to give us some side effects. That's, that's the kind of stuff. That's why we take aromacin, uh, Novadex, some of these other estrogen blockers when we take steroids is because of this. There are other estrogen receptors that contribute to anabolism that tell your cells to create some more protein, protein synthesis, right? And now those get stimulated and those help gain muscle mass. That's, that's why if you're doing, like if you're in a cycle and you go and you just crush your estrogen with anti-estrogens, that, that hinders your gains as well. Estrogen helps with, with your gains. And if you've listened to my work, like I said, you know all about this. Now, Back to the steron, it actually attaches to the estrogen receptors that contribute to anabolism and increase protein synthesis in your body. Not, not to the ones that are going to make you grow gynecomastia or water retention, any of those things. It's quite a unique hormone. How, how can an insect hormone do this in our bodies? Again, said this before, we're all carbon-based life forms. We, we theorize that there's probably other life forms that could exist based on other things like silica, for example. Theorize that's possible, right? So... That being the case, a lot of our structures are very similar. You know, at the very core, our DNA is, is we share DNA across pretty much any living thing 
across the earth. I could be wrong about that, but most of it at least, right? So a lot of these structures work on us. That's why uh, caffeine uh, makes us, wakes us up. That's why uh, other things like THC could dumb us down. You know, there's different chemistry. That's why uh, the excrement of bacteria, alcohol, can get us drunk. There's definitely other... We, we get drunk off of the poo-poo of other living organisms. We enjoy it. We pay money for it. Some people even waste their lives for it, right? So this is... Ecdysteron is really good at stimulating that estrogen uh, receptor that signals anabolism, protein synthesis. It's a pretty incredible compound. And there's definitely some good research behind it. This is one worth looking at. And uh, as always, uh, let me give it to you. PMID. Three one one two three eight zero one. Egg this steroids as non-conventional anabolic agent performance enhancement by egg supplementation in humans. And now here comes a little piece of the abstract. Recent studies suggest that the anabolic effect of egg or disterone, however you guys like to pronounce it, cool with me. Anyway, keep it going. A naturally occurring steroid hormone claimed to enhance the physical performance is mediated by estrogen receptor ER binding, estrogen receptor binding, in comparison with the prohibited anabolic agents like methadone. Like, now, yeah, guys, so pretty much testosterone, diana, well, all these steroids, they attach to the androgen receptor, the male sex hormone receptor. And obviously, some compounds like dianabol and testosterone uh, will have a conversion to an estrogen, and they will attach to estrogen receptors. Now, that is one of the reasons dianabol is a, a, one of the big bulking steroids, because you, you're getting a bit of a double prong. You know, that estrogen helps protein synthesis too. Having both of them at once can really multiply your sort of results. So anyway, getting back to the study. All right, let me, let me get back to reading the study. So where was I? All right, so claimed to enhance physical performance is mediated by the estrogen receptor binding. In comparison with the prohibitive, or should I say illegal for, for many of us in the first world, anabolic agents, methadone and others. Now here's the rest of that sentence. Egdesterone revealed to be even more effective in a recent study performed on rats. I just want to tell you guys how to best use it for maximum results. I mean, guys, look, WADA is already looking into this as a possible banned substance. Go look at the website and look at Egdesterone. And as the years go on, guys, you're going to see a lot of different, really good choices in egdysteron and people really understanding how this whole class of egdysteroids can contribute to anabolism. You know, egdysteron has been around for quite a while, but really it's been more recently that it's been researched. And there's different egdysteroids. There's a whole class. This is a hormone that anthropods need to shed their exoskeleton, you know. Any heart cell living organism, that shell doesn't grow with them. They have to shed it. They're softies for a while or, or they metamorphosis, caterpillar stage, whatever you call it, different anthropods. It's what it does. There's, there's many different ones, and they're all going to have different effects in our bodies, as we're going to find over time, as more sources of them become available. It'll be a thing where you'll be stacking egdysteron. Believe me, you heard it from Ricky B. Rock. Now, look, the best way to use egdysteron is, in my opinion, uh, you could use it with your anabolic cycle. Anytime you're taking anabolic androgenic hormones, you can add egdysteron as that safe compound to add as an agonist on the right estrogen receptors helping you get some of those estrogen gains along with your anabolic androgenic hormones like if you were taking a good anabolic hormone that didn't aromatize into estrogen like say uh anabar or one dhea one, one epidehydrosterone uh which you can get from uh, vintage muscle too by the way one andro because this is a vintage muscle video right <laughs> that's why we're here guys and this is the channel any of those non-aromatizing you know winstro anabar masteron one dhea any non-aromatizing anabolic, uh, you should be able to just kick it up a notch by adding the ectosterone into the mix. It should be a nice kind of bit of a pick-me-up, just an additional angle to anabolism. Just one more receptor to create protein synthesis that wasn't quite being stimulated before. At least not from those steroids that don't cause significant aromatization into estrogen hormones. The product I'm going to recommend you guys take is AMP from Vintage Muscle. Now, this is a Vintage Muscle sponsored video. You guys know that. Love these guys. Their products are incredible. The boss man at the top, Jared, he's a stand-up guy. He tests his ingredients. He makes sure the purity is up to par. I got to tell you, when I was introduced to the line and I seen what they were doing, I realized, look, it's a good line. They're putting just really good, strong ingredients that have been proven. You know, 1-DHEA, 4-DHEA, 7-Oxo-DHEA. Some of the stuff that they use has been around for quite a while. They're just offering you good quality versions of it with lapse testing at a real reasonable price. 
and you get the support to go along with it. In the vintage muscle community as of today, there are going to be literally thousands of other men in the group that have some experience with the products you're taking now from, from vintage muscle or that are probably running the exact same product right now. You can talk about your results, talk about your goals, compare notes. Now all that was great and well, strong products, clean and tested. Now that was all right. They picked strong androgenic hormones that are still legal. The few that you're still allowed to buy over the counter, they focus on purity and testing the raw materials as they come in and testing bottles of every batch before it goes out, giving you discounts on stacks and guys that want to do more will save more money for doing more. And guys that want to do the higher dosing will save more money if they want to do the higher dosing. And I thought that was already a recipe for success. And then they released Amped. Amp is a cutting edge essential amino acid blend that upregulates anabolic activity in the body, meaning you get the most out of your vintage muscle stack, featuring the highest quality turkesteron and ecdysteron, which we were just talking about, right guys? Naturally occurring plant steroids that have similar chemical structure to androgens. This is right off their website, I just read it, and it's pretty much what it is, guys. As I just explained, adding ecdysteron to any anabolic androgenic cycle is a good way to exploit the proper estrogen receptor to help you build more muscle mass. Now, this stack is pretty cool. I mean, it's got, it's got the ectosteron at 150 milligrams per serving. It's got turkesteron for 100 milligrams per dose. And then look out on the turkesteron video, guys. That episode is coming soon. It also has an electrolyte hydration complex powder of about 750 milligrams, as well as a full spectrum EAA and the BCA complex, three grams per serving so you get three grams of eaas and bcas l leucin l isoleucin l valin l lysine l theonine l phenylalanine that one that one i kind of up sorry l histitanine that one i fucked up too hcl l tryptophan we've heard of that vitamin complex and electrolyte hydration complex glucosamine for your joints i see this as a really good pre-workout everyday product you can take and now not pre-workout because it's going to make your heart a jump out of your chest. There are no real stimulants in this product, no caffeine or anything like that. It's pretty much good key amino acid profile to target muscle gains, the amino acids you need for that for that muscle mass. Turkesteron, which I'm gonna get into later. Ectosteron to exploit the estrogen pathway towards anabolism in your whole sex hormone pathway towards building muscle. You also get some electrolytes. You know, in my interview with Guru Amin Alai, he told me his theory is that a lot of the bodybuilders now are dying because they're not getting enough electrolytes going up to competition. And electrolytes help your nerves carry signals. Not enough electrolytes, your heart might just not beat properly. And you also get glucosamine, which just contributes to the building blocks of your joints. To me, this is a great product that I would probably take a couple times a day. I'd probably take one scoop in the morning. And you could take it a couple ways. You could take one scoop a day or take a couple. One in the morning, one before training. Amp is a great product, guys. If you're buying something from Vintage Muscle, if you're buying one of their uh, anabolic androgenic hormones, uh, make sure to stack it up with Amp. And what's great about AMP is that if you have a favorite pre-workout, if there's another product that you already like taking as a pre-workout, it's got stimulants, it's got NO2 vasodilation ingredients, then you could still take it. You could still take that and then just throw the AMP on it as your sort of BCA joint support, multiply the effects of your anabolic androgenic cycle sort of support. In the morning, pre-workout. You've all seen Ecdysteron. Maybe I just explained a little bit about how it works, but you've seen it. You've seen it out there. You, and you know you can trust the Vintage Muscle brand. And Jared, he's a good dude. That's it for me today. I don't think I need to convince you anymore about Ecdysteron. There's plenty of info out there. Amp is the product you want to get it from, specifically designed to go along with your cycle of 1-DHEA, 4-DHEA, hydroxygenin, 19-NOR, whatever you're into. That's it for me, guys. I'll catch you guys in the Vintage Muscle community on Facebook. This is Ricky V. Rock.